today. I want to talk to you for just a few moments on the subject of letting it go. Touch somebody next to you and say, let it go. Come on, tell somebody on the other side, let it go. I want to talk to you about letting it go. Worship team, stay close if you will. We're probably going to come back and do some more of that in just a moment. Let it go. Letting it go. We're going to talk about letting it go. 2018 has been a year for a lot of us in this room. It's been a year of allowing some things in our lives to just distract us and take our focus off of the presence of God. To distract us from where God is trying to take us. To distract us from, from our first love. Now is a moment, a last Sunday in 2018, that God gives us an opportunity to make that right with Him. To think about where we are. And to think about what we may have let take place of God in our lives, the most important thing. Let me say something to you, and I never want you to forget this. According to your Bible, you were created by and for God. Why do I exist? The same reason you exist is the same reason I exist, and we exist to worship God. You were created for that purpose. Some of you are doing a lot of things to earn money and doing all kinds of stuff like that. You're doing that, and that's what you do it for, to earn money. That's not what you were created to do. You were created to worship God. If you have lived your life in 2018 apart from giving honor to God and honoring Him above everything in your life, then the reason that you feel void and empty is because you have forsaken that that brings true life to you and true peace and true joy and true inner satisfaction. In Luke chapter 18, verse 18, the Bible said, And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good save one. That is God. Thou knowest, then Jesus says something interesting. He said, you know, you know the commandments. The question from the rich young ruler is, how do I inherit eternal life, everlasting life? And the, the, the rich young ruler, as, as, as he asked this question, Jesus responds to him and says, thou knowest the commandments. And then he begins to name them. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and mother. And here, watch this, the, the rich young ruler interrupts Jesus and he says, All of these things have I kept from my youth up. He interrupts Jesus. Jesus is not through, but he interrupts him. And he says, I've kept all of these. When he does, Jesus responds immediately and says, Now Jesus heard these things. He said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing. Sell all that thou hast, distribute it to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Come and follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful because he was very rich. I never noticed this before in this passage of Scripture. I never noticed that what literally happened was that when the, the, rich, the rich young ruler was saying, I have everything that I've wanted in this life. He was wealthy. He had all the material possessions. But he goes to Jesus and says, you know, there's one thing I haven't been able to buy. There's one thing that I have not been able to purchase, and that's eternal or everlasting life. How do I get that? In other words, what he's saying is, with everything that I own and everything that I possess, there's still something significant missing from my life. And when he says this, Jesus immediately responds to him and said, you know what? He asked, how do I get it? And Jesus said, you know the commandments. And he begins to quote them, but he's interrupted by the rich young ruler and the rich young ruler said, I've kept all of these. But then Jesus immediately comes back and said, yes, but there's one lacking. 
And I never thought about it before, but when you read this passage of Scripture, Jesus did not give the commandment and did not list the commandment that thou shalt have no other gods before me. It's not there. So could it be that the direct reference that Jesus is, is giving, that what he's referring to is that very commandment? That what's lacking from your life is the fact that you, the thing you're looking for is that you have allowed your riches to become your God. Because you can't have any other gods before me. You see, a lot of people right now in your life, you have a lot of things that you, that you have worked very hard for because you felt like they were going to bring you significance. A lot of people feel like if I, could, if I can just live on a certain road, in a certain neighborhood, in a certain house, it's going to bring that significance I need. If I could just get that big house, if I can drive that car, I can ride through town feeling like I, I am who I need to be only to find out that they bought a brand new car that had that wonderful smell of the brand new leather, but six months later the, fa the smell begins to fade away and you realize that the significance wasn't found in that car, so you have to move on to something else. That's what it was with the rich young ruler. He had everything that life could offer you, but he said there's something missing, and I realize that it's everlasting life, eternal life. Eternal life represents an inner joy, inner peace. He doesn't have that, that inner peace and joy that comes from personal relationship with God. How do I get it? And God said, you know the commandments, and he starts to quote them, but then he's interrupted, and he said, I keep those commandments. But, but God said, no, 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 there's something wrong. The problem is, is that you've put another God before me. You've made a God, watch this, you've made a God out of your money. The Bible said you either serve God or you serve mammon. And he was telling the rich young man that you have made a God out of money. You tried to find significance in your money. You try to find it, but it's not there. And so God says, here's the deal. You've come to the place in life where you've made such a God out of your money that you've got to make a choice today. You got to let your money go. Some of you are sitting in this room saying, oh God, please tell me. I don't have to let my money go. All $17.29 of it, don't tell me I got to let it go. Don't tell me that. You see, today what I want you to understand, when I talk about letting it go, I'm not, it, it, and, and it may be literal for somebody. There may be something or even someone that you have to let go. But more importantly, it's, it's the attitude of that this particular thing in your mind has taken the place of God and God wants you to get things in perspective. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. I had a guy I was mentoring for a, for a while. He's hanging around with me. And, and, and he'd say, Pastor, tell me something I need to hear. I'd say, Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then all these other things shall be added unto you. We'd get back together again. He said, tell me what something I need to hear. I'd say, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. After a while, I'd get to him. He'd say, Pastor, he said, oh, I know. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. I cannot say it loud enough today that the problem that we have in America is that we've gotten away from God. We're seeking everything other than God. We're seeking fame. We're seeking fortune. We're seeking education. We're seeking after relationships other than God. And it's leaving us empty and void. We have a society that is more addicted to substance than any other in history. We consume more alcohol. We consume more drugs. We consume more of this stuff because we are trying to fill a void that can only be filled by the presence of an almighty God. Young people hear me. Keep doing what everybody else does and you'll keep getting the same results. Smoke all of that stuff, whatever you call it. It always gets a new name. It's reefer, it's, it's you know, it's marijuana, grass, gas. I don't know. What, what do you call it? <laughs> My wife, I'm, I'm confused. My wife tells me we need to get rid of gas. Come on, somebody. Try to deal with that. Hello. 
What is the point? What's, what's, it's, 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 we're so consumed by things that just don't bring it. The rich young ruler said, hey, how do, how do I get it? eternal life how do I get that that bring all this other stuff is not working for me it's not real it just doesn't work when I think about that I'm reminded of a story I'm reminded of a story I read just recently about a little girl who went to the store and when she went to the store she was looking through the store and she saw a set of imitation pearls a pearl little little pearl necklace that was about ten dollars and she fixed her eyes on it and like little girls do she wanted that necklace so bad she wanted that necklace so very bad and she told her mom her mom said well you need to save your money and get it so the little girl went home and she started looking through the couch and finding the little quarters and dimes and stuff in the couch and every time somebody would give her a dollar she'd put it away and for several weeks she, she saved up her money until the day finally came when she had enough to go and to purchase that beautiful necklace that her heart desired. She wanted so bad. And she, her mom takes her to the store and she purchases that necklace and she puts that necklace on. Watch this like kids do. You know how kids are. She puts the necklace on around her neck and she doesn't want to take it off. And her, fa- her mother finally had to tell her, you know, honey, you have to take that necklace off. When you take a shower, your neck's going to turn green. And so she says, oh, no, but I don't want to take it. So she finally talked to her, but she took it off. And as soon as she took it off, she took a shower and get back out of the shower, drop and put it right back on. And she wore it with that huge smile on her face for days and days. She was so excited about this necklace. One night, her dad came in to the bedroom where she was, and he sat down beside her bed. And he was praying with her before she went to sleep. And he said, honey, do you love daddy? And she said, Daddy, you know I love you. He said, Well, baby, if you love daddy, you'll give daddy that necklace. She said, Oh, daddy, not my necklace. I got this special little, little stuffed animal in my closet. I'm going to let you have that. He kissed her on the forehead and left the room. A few nights later, he came in and he prayed with her again, tucked her in. And he looked at her and he said, baby, do you love daddy? She said, daddy, you know I love you. He said, well, give daddy the necklace. She said, daddy, you don't want this necklace. Let me give you something else. She gave him something else. A few nights later, the same thing was to happen. But this time, daddy opened the door. When he opened the door to go in the room, she was sitting on the edge of her bed. Little tears were rolling down her face and dripping off the end of her cheek and her little chin was quivering. She reached out with the necklace in her hand. Her daddy walked over to her, took the necklace out of her hand, put it in his pocket, and he said, that's what I was waiting on, baby. He reached over in the other pocket and pulled out a little velvet box, opened up the box, and inside the velvet box was a set of real pearls. He said, baby, before I could give you the real, I needed you to give up the fake. You see, this is what I need somebody to understand at the closing of 2018 going into 2019 that what God is saying to this church on a Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon at 12, 13, December the 30th, 2018, you got to give up the fake so I can give you the real. You got to release the artificial. So I, so you can experience the genuine. You see, this is what's wrong. We're going at it. We're looking for love in all of the wrong places. We're looking for what we didn't, what we really need, and our heart desires in the wrong places. God said, "I want to give you the real. I want you to experience the genuine. And when you get this, it satisfies. When you get this." There's that true peace and joy. Let me tell you something. I don't care what any of you say today. I don't care what you say. You can try to act like it all you want to. It ain't the truth, and you know it's not the truth. When you go to Dollar General, 
and you buy that bottle of three, it's a three liter or whatever, for about 69 cents, and it says cola on the front, got a little check mark or something. Come on now. You can drink that, and then you go and get that real thing that says C-O-K-E on the front, and you try to compare them, I don't care what you say. It don't taste the same. Now let's be real about it. Let's be real about it. We've all been there, done that, got the t-shirt, had to drink the 69 cent three liter and act like it was the real thing. I feel you. But the truth of the matter is, it wasn't. Not the real thing. Nothing tastes like a Coke. Come on now. It's got that. My wife will get that. My wife will get a Coke, I promise y'all. She'll get a Coke. And she does it all the time. She'll get a Coke and she'll drink that. She'll say, ain't nothing like the, that fizz in that. That's, that ain't nothing like that stuff strong. Ain't nothing like that Coke. I don't like for her to say that after I just kissed her. Ain't nothing like that Coke. something about the real thing I thought about this as I thought about the little story of the little girl I thought about this and I was reminded of the people of God I was reminded of a season and a time in history the prophet Jeremiah was led of the Holy Spirit anointed of God to speak the word of the Lord God said something interesting in Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 2 I want you to watch this Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 2, the word of the Lord comes and says, Go and shout this message to Jerusalem. God says to Jeremiah, Shout this message to Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says. Don't you want to hear what the Lord says today, church? Don't you want to hear what the Lord says? Jeremiah said, This is what the Lord says. I remember how eager you were to please me, past tense. I believe, I remember how eager you were to please me as a young bride long ago. You remember when you first got married? You remember how it was when you got together? You couldn't stay away from each other. You had to be with each other all the time. Now you're searching for excuses to go somewhere. Come on, somebody. I need a break. The same thing happens in our relationship with God, we get to the place where our love grows cold. He said, I remember how eager you were to please me as a young bride long ago, how you loved me and followed me, and even through the barren wilderness, you were driven by your passionate love for me. He said, I remember that, past tense. Something happened. You see, this is what I need you to understand about Judah. Judah had forgotten God. What Jeremiah and who Jeremiah is talking to is not people who had never known God. This is not the nearby pagans who had always practiced pagan worship and never known the true and living God. This is the children of Israel, the people after God's own heart that had once been in Egyptian bondage and led out of Egyptian bondage to the place of promise. These are God's chosen people. These are the ones God would show, you know, would lead them with a cloud by day and fire by night and let water run out of a rock. These were the ones who experienced the supernatural grace and mercy and love of God. And the Lord says to him, go and shout this message, Jeremiah, this is what the Lord said. I remember how eager you were to please me. I remember how, as a young bride, long ago, how you loved me, you followed me, even through the barren wilderness, but something happened. Judah wonders from God. And 11 verses later, this is what your Bible says. For my people have done two evils. Two evils. They've abandoned me. They've abandoned me. And notice what he says. They've abandoned me, the fountain of living water. Fountain of living water. A fountain that satisfies, a fountain that flows freely, a fountain you can drink of day and night, a fountain that brings satisfaction continually. He said, 
You've abandoned me, the fountain of living water, and they have dug out for themselves, watch this, cracked cisterns that can hold no water at all. Judah had gotten away from God. The people of God had left the Lord, started worshiping other gods, idols, gotten away from the fountain of, of true living water and hewn for themselves, the Bible says, cisterns. You see, the word of the Lord comes through the prophet Jeremiah and God gives Jeremiah a, an analogy that the people of God could understand because the analogy was that in Israel there was only a certain season that the water fro flowed freely, that rain came and it came in, in, in large quantities. But then there was, there was also seasons, there were very long seasons where there was no rain at all. And so it forced Israel into the place where they would have to hewn out what these, these cisterns that, the, that they could catch the rainwater in the season of the heavy rain so that they could use it during the dry seasons. The problem with the cisterns were they were made of porous limestone and it almost immediately as they would make them, cracks would start in the cisterns and it would cause the water to run out of them. You see, this is what I need you to understand, that the cistern from the time that it was dug out could not hold water. You've heard it all of your life. It said, that just don't hold water. So these are broken sisters. So what happens is this God gives this great analogy to Jeremiah and he said, this is what you've done. Tell my people what they've done is they've forsaken the genuine, the real, the authentic, the fountain of living water that gives satisfaction like nothing else. And they begin to hewn out these artificial, they're referred to as artificial artificial reservoirs, reservoirs that won't hold water. They run, they leak, they don't work. It's not good. They've committed two evils. They've forsaken me and then they've, and they've forsaken me to adhere to something that's not genuine and real. So what do the children of Israel do? They wander around and they wander around anxiously and they wander around unsatisfied and they can never find peace and they go from serving this God to that God and get caught up in paganism and they get caught up and they're wandering around in the wilderness for 40 years trying to find their way because they have forsaken the fountain of living water. I'm here to tell you today that in the United States of America, in this nation in which we live, we have had the word of God flowing freely. The fountain of living water 24-7 on television, radio, from the pulpits of America. Jesus has been preached and, and lifted up and exalted. But we have a nation now that has begun to wander from God. We have a nation now where people have begun to, 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 they're digging out these false, these fake artificial cisterns that won't hold water. And we, like the children of Israel, wandering around trying to find our way back to God. Forty years they wandered in the wilderness and, and people even died in the wilderness trying to find their way back to God because they had settled for that which was not real. Can I tell you, look at me, some of you look at me, young people look at me, look at me right now, hear me today. You've settled for something that's not real. It's artificial. It's no good. You see what happens is there's a short season that a cistern appears to be, a broken cistern appears to be a place of provision. Oh, I'm going to give it to you. Sin's good for a season. Sin feels good for a season. Sin looks good, but tastes good for a season. Sin's good for a while. But you've got to understand the enemy's up to something the whole time. He ain't going to give you something don't taste good. He ain't going to give you something that you know, don't, don't, don't make you feel good. It's going to start out feeling good. Appears to be the real thing. My God, this is what I've been searching for all my life. Huh? Young men, don't, don't think for a minute he ain't going to put something in front of you. going to shake it. Come on now. Right on over there. You know what I mean? Got everything all in the, it, it appears to be everything all in the right place. Mark that word appear. 
We live in a day and age you can get fooled. I'm preaching to you today. I want you to hear me. I feel the anointing today, God. And so what happens is, is that for a short season, that cistern is a place of provision for you. It provides for a short time what you thought you were looking for. But then after a while, because it's cracked, after a while, because it, it, it's not the real thing, it begins to run out. And you know what? That, 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 it, in the beginning... Then I got high. And it was all good in the beginning. But then after a while, what used to make you high don't make you high no more. And you're going deeper and deeper into something that doesn't provide for you what it provided for you in the beginning. You know why? It ain't real. It's artificial. See, I want to talk to some of you sipping saints today. Oh, I came to church today. I don't know. If I don't, I'm going to know if I'm going to stay or not. Because I came to hear my pastor tell me I'm going to be blessed in the city and blessed in the field and blessed when I come and blessed when I go. You should have got out while the getting was good. Because that's, uh, let me tell you something. You know what? I'm, I, there, is, uh, there is that, that word is there. But there's also the other word that that all starts with. If you do these things I've commanded you, do, do, you to do, then these blessings will come on you and overtake. If and then. I ain't going to go there. I'm going to leave that alone for a minute. But see, it, it, it appears to be a place of provision. It appears to be what you need. But you get deeper and deeper into it. And after a while, you're doing something that don't make you feel like it did in the beginning. But the only problem is now is that you got a habit, an addiction to something that don't make you feel like it did in the beginning. So now what was provision is now a place or a prison. What do you mean? As it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. Let me show you something. Look at Jeremiah chapter 38, verse 6. Now notice this. Watch this. Don't you miss this. So the officials took Jeremiah from his cell and lowered him by ropes into an empty cistern in the prison yard. It belonged to that guy right there. If you can pronounce it, I'll give you $10. Watch this. A member of the royal family. There was no water in the cistern, but there was a thick layer of mud at the bottom, and Jeremiah sank down into it. Now notice what it said. The officials took Jeremiah from his cell, lowered him by ropes into an empty cistern. Where at? In the prison yard. Now, now the cistern is not a, it's not a place of provision any longer. Now it's a prison. As it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. When you, you, you move from a place where the, imp, the, 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 the enemy makes things... He makes things look good. He makes things taste good. He makes things, you know, some of you sipping saints, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it started out with, you know, the Lord don't mind a little, you know, you know, I'm, <laughs> the Lord don't mind a little now and then. <laughs> the Lord don't mind. And so you got to feeling bad over the holidays and you got a little down and need a little pick me up. And so what you did was poured yourself a little glass of wine because a little glass of wine gives you that little warm, fuzzy little feeling, lifts up your spirits. But here's the problem with that is one glass of wine turned to two glasses of wine. I'm here to preach to somebody today. And two glasses of wine turned to three glasses of wine. And the next thing you know, you've drank the whole bottle of wine. And then you realize that the wine don't do it for me no more. I got to have a little something, a little, a little more kick, a little, a little stronger, a little something, a little more proof to it. Come on, somebody. I got to get that, get that good stuff. You know what I mean? And then after a while, you're drinking that good stuff. Don't taste good in the stomach. You might as well drink a bottle of alcohol. Come on, somebody. You know what I'm talking about. I'm not rubbing alcohol. It ain't got no taste to it at all. You might as well be drinking because you know that stuff don't taste good. Somebody said, well, you can't do that. Oh, I know. I ha don't, don't tell me. I've, I've had friends. I had, a, I had a friend. His father was an alcoholic. He couldn't find the real stuff, so he would go in his bedroom and lock the door and drink his aqua velva. You know why? 
Because that's what the enemy does to you. He moves it from a place of you, you thinking that you have a place, that it's a place of provision to a place of prison. It's got you bound. Got you all tangled up, tied up. Got you acting stupid. Don't treat everybody like you're supposed to. Neglecting your responsibilities. Walking out on your family. Going around, running around with folks you don't know nothing about. In a prison place. I came to preach today. A prison place. But see, let me tell you something about the devil, y'all. He, he, he don't want to take you to prison. That ain't where he wants to take you. Never was about prison. It never was about bondage. It never, it never was about tying you up. He wants to kill you. The Bible says the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He ain't want to try and take something from you, put you in prison place. He wants to kill you. You see, because this is what happens is, is that you, you see the broken cistern as a place of provision and then the enemy gets you all tangled up and tied up and, and takes you to the place of, of uh, to a prison place only to, for you to end up where he intended for you to end up with anyway. And you, and you don't have to end up there physically. You can end up there spiritually. You end up in a spiritual graveyard. As it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. Let me show you. It's Jeremiah 41 verse 9. Watch this. The cistern where Ishmael dumped the bodies of men he murdered was, a, was the large one dug by King Asa. So now the cistern is not a place of provision. It's not even a prison place. Now it's a graveyard. You see, the, 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 the cisterns that the enemy would have you to drink from. Listen to me, young people. Listen to me, older people alike. The cistern, the artificial reservoirs that he would have you to drink from, they will end up being a place of death. You see, what, what can happen to us is if we continue to drink from the faults instead of drinking from the real place, we can find ourselves spiritually dead and we can find ourselves in the position where we cannot feel his presence any longer and his power and, and anointing in our lives. Let me tell you something. God is calling the people of God and the last Sunday of 2018 back to a place of real provision. Back to a place where you can be satisfied. Back to a place where you can drink from a fountain that never runs dry. Back to the place that Jesus talked about when he talked to the woman at the well. And he said, honey, you've been drinking from all the wrong wells. You've been introduced to all the wrong men. But today you met the right man. Today you're going to get what you were searching for when you met the first man. And went to the second man. And went to the third man. And went to the fourth man. I'm talking to somebody up in this church today. You're going you're gonna, to today, you're finding what you've been looking for all along because I am the fountain of living water when you drink of me you'll never thirst again the Lord today is challenging the church to come back to him today the Lord's saying let go of the artificial release the empty the drugs the alcohol, the pornography, the, the hobbies, the relationships, the career. Got to quit my job? No, but you do have to change your attitude about your job. It's not your source. God's always your source. Your bank account's not your source. God's always your source. Seek first and his righteousness. And all these other things will be added unto you. You know what has to happen at the close of this year? Some of you just got to get before God. We're not Listen, I'm not just talking to people here today. There may be a few of you that you've never accepted Jesus, and I hope that you accept him before you leave this room. But who I'm talking to primarily today is people that you've known what it was like, just like Jeremiah was talking to Judah. You've known the presence of God. You were a young bride. You obeyed me, and you honored me, and you lived for me as you should. But something drew you away from me. You started drinking from that that was artificial. 
in 2019, the Lord saying to us, don't continue to settle for the artificial when you can walk close with the Lord in a place of genuine blessing, genuine provision, genuine, genuine, that that is real and lasting and will satisfy the longing of your soul and your spirit. Nothing, ladies and gentlemen, can do you like Jesus. Nothing. And God is calling. Mercy is calling today to this church. Repent. Move away. Disregard. Let go of the broken cisterns of this life. And again begin to drink deeply from the fountain of living water that never runs dry. Stand with me all over this room today. With every head bowed and every eye closed. And no one looking around today. The closing moments of this service, it's the last Sunday of 2018. Today is another opportunity that God has afforded you to look at your life. to look at your life today and ask yourself the question, am I empty? Am I dealing with and partaking of something that is artificial and does not bring true satisfaction. Have I in 2018 allowed something to take the place of God in my life? Have I depended upon alcohol to make me feel good when I needed that? Have I been, have I allowed a drug to try to satisfy what only God can? Some young man or even older man in this room, have you allowed pornography to take the place of God in your life and what God wants to do to bring true and real satisfaction? Is it a hobby? Every time you felt like you weren't satisfied, you had to jump on that boat and go out fishing, grab those golf clubs and go golfing. Spent time out on the golf range when you know that it wasn't going to really bring what needed to be bring. Did you, did you start a new relationship recently, really one that you knew that you probably shouldn't have started, but... Searching, 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 searching. You knew what it was to serve God. You once were in love with Him. Passionately, you cared about God and served Him and worshipped Him and honored Him. But something, something, something came in and something took your eyes off of of God and took your focus off of what is real and you've had to spend all of 2018 settling for something that is totally artificial it's artificial it's not real does it work it's empty 
with every head bowed and every eye closed, this is what I need you to do today. Pastor, the word in this room today was for me. I get it. I get it. I hear it. I'm going to be real. I know people think I got it all together. I know that. But, but you know what, Pastor? I've been, 2018's been a year where I've been drinking from an artificial reservoir. But you know what? I feel, I feel like mercy's calling me. I feel, I feel like I'm being drawn back into the presence of God. I feel like I know where I got to go. I know what I have to do. I know that I have to repent. Of the place that I am. Not worrying about one soul around you. You know who you are. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. I'm, I'm not just talking to people that's never accepted Jesus. I'm talking about people that's been saved. You know what it's like to be saved. You know what it's like to serve God. You've been coming to church. But you know that you have allowed something to take place of God in your life. But on this last Sunday of 2018. I'm not going to do it anymore. Slip your hand up. Slip your hand up. Pray for me, Pastor. I know I've gotten away from where I need to be. Thank you. Hands are going up. Come on. Come on. That's right. Be real. Be real. Be real. Be real. Hands are going up everywhere. Hands are going up everywhere. I know that I've allowed something to stand in between me and God, but I'm going to close this year out right. I'm going to close this year out understanding what I've got to do with God. I'm closing this year out making things right with God. I'm closing this year out putting my life in perspective. I'm closing this year out realizing that I can't drink from the artificial reservoirs any longer. Can I tell you today that today's going to be a tough decision for some of you? Some of you got to make, you got a tough decision to make. But it'll be the best decision you've ever made of your life. To walk away from that. That, that for a while seemed to be a place of provision. But has only in, imprisoned you. Bound you. And it's own the way to taking you to the graveyard it's going to take the spiritual life from you today but today I said no 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 I'm not going to allow it that's you lift your hand let me see those hands that's you as you have lifted your hand today this is what I'm asking you to do in the closing moments of this service I'm asking you to step forward from your seat and come come today come today as an open sign a, a, a declaration today I'm, today all things are new today I surrender that that artificial thing to God today I'm not going to let I'm not going to let uh, th this artificial thing take over the real thing I'm going to drink from the fountain of living water I'm, I want the real thing I don't want the fault, faults I don't want the fake I don't want that that's not real I want the real thing I want to be satisfied come on they're still coming from all over the room come on come on come on Come on in here, make way.